Hello everyone. This is the discussion for the week ten, and uh, this is uh, the last le- last week of the lecture. And uh, Wednesday will be the final exam. So in this week's discussion, I will just talk about the. Uh, let briefly go through the, like the, last year's final exam. So from the fourth final exam. And uh, I'm I will I will just go through it and go through some questions and uh, point out the important concepts in this example the exam exam and one so my expectation is that after I go through it you will better understand the questions uh in the previous exam. Before I go through it, I would uh, say a bit about about the uh, exam on the Wednesday. So I see that professor has uh, uploaded some a short video to help you to prepare for the Wednesday's exam. Here, uh, I had something to add. Um, so why? Uh, so first, why go through the exam here? I mean, the exam of last year. I feel that our exam questions, um, uh, of like a bit of different style, so we would not emphasize too much on the calculation, but, I mean, on the ability of the calculation, but we would uh, expect you to, like the know the properties of the Fourier transform or properties of the signal system very well. Because you need to flexibly use that property to do the, uh, to solving the problem to solve the problem. If you, some sometimes you can do you can solve the problem with the brute force way, but I'm sure it will take you a longer time. So like the, for the, when you are doing the questions on Wednesday's exam, please keep in mind, they are like the, for most of the questions. There are like the, there are like a clever way to do it, and no no complex questions there. If you find your solution is too complex, complicated, you must uh, uh, go in. Maybe you must take a detour, detour, or you go in the wrong way. Okay, I will continue. So. Let me briefly go through. Uh, okay. So, uh, this last year's final exam it has uh, five questions. One is the signal system basics. The other, is the second is the frequency response and the LTI system. The third is the sampling and the modulation, and the fourth is the Laplace transformation, and the fifth is the feedback system. So, since the feedback system is not taught in the class, so uh, we will not test it in the final exam, and here I I would I wouldn't go through it as well. Okay. So the first question is the signal system basics. Um, the question one a is about the real and like the real and even. I mean. I mean, real, real old, real imaginary, even old for the Fourier transform. So you need to understand like the, as we have done like in private homeworks, we have like, for example, given a signal, if the signal is, re- is real signal, what's the Fourier transform of it? If the signal is imaginary signal, what's the Fourier transform of it? So I mean, you should keep this in mind and you should like the, at like the uh, you should know this because this might be useful for you to solve the uh, uh, like the real problems in signal system and the set and the, the AI like the all LTI system are stable so here the solution says that always not if you have an integration system it's not stable uh, here I just want to add one thing, like in the lectures, I'm sure in the somewhere in the lecture, 
uh, there is a way to determine the stability of the LTI system. So if you have an LTI system, if it has like the import response, as H tau, H T, and if we we can utilize, we can do the integration of the absolute value of the H T to check if it is bounded. If the integration of this H T is bounded, we can say the system, the LTI system is stable. So this is one way to check the stability of the LTI system. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the question B. Question B is just, uh, uh, I think the key point for the key takeaway for the question B is that for the LTI system, we could write that the like the, the system in a, in the convolution in the special in the time domain, and we can write it in the multiplication in the frequency domain. So the thing is that you need to check that if it can be written in that way. So here it give a counter example that is. When the omega is larger than zero, I mean the absolute value of the omega is larger than zero, the so HJ omega can is zero, but the output is not zero. So it means that uh, that was, means that we cannot find a frequency response to explain this pair. I mean we cannot find the H omega HJ omega that lead to we can get the x j omega. Uh, we can from the x j omega get the what omega. We can go, we cannot find that kind of x j omega. Okay, the question C is to determine the uh, causal and stability. I will skip it uh, because I think the solution can give you the already give the you good uh, explanation. Okay, so the let's go to the second question, frequency response and LTI system. This is also very important. So we have like the input XT and output WT, and we have three subsystems, S1, S2, S and S3. And this is like the uh, oper operation like the subtraction between the S1 and the combination of the cascaded system of S2 and S3. So the sub question A is to ask you to determine the like the linear linearity and the, like the time invariance of this system. Yeah, so the so I think the solution uh tells uh as well, I think a solution says that a, cast, a, a cascade two LT system is still as a LT system, and the summation of the two LT system again preserve linearity and time events. Okay, and uh, and question B, uh, like so give the counter example of the counter example of showing that to show that. Uh, if the S the equivalent is LTI system, but the S1, S2, S3 can should not necessarily be all LTI system. Yeah, so I will not go through the question B as well. So the question C is very uh, is very standard like the question for the LTI system. So if we have the S1, S2, and S3. Like the uh, and uh, 
it can be criticized either by the input and output different, like the relationship, or by the input response. So, uh, I mean, when we see these questions, maybe the first thing coming to into our mind is to find that is uh, like the frequency frequency response. like the H1J omega and H2J omega and H3J omega. Yeah, so like the H1J omega, like for the, I mean, for the system S1 and S3, you can just take the like the Fourier transformer onto it. And then you just need to find the like the, Y one J omega divided by X one J omega. So this is the H one J omega. So does the H three J omega. For the H two J omega, H two J omega is just the F T. I mean the Fourier transform of the H two T because the I mean the impulse response of uh, system S2 is given. And uh, when we observe it, it's the shift of shift, shifted version of a step function. The Fourier transform of a step function is, uh, I think it's a demo, uh, it's proved in the lecture, it's in this form, and uh, we, we add like the exponential of uh, minus three j omega. <coughs> This exponential term will act as a shift. <coughs> H is three j. I mean H is three j omega. You again. You just need to take the take the like the Fourier transform. You have like the Y t equal to j omega, oh sorry, y j omega is equal to j omega s j omega plus j square h j x j omega. Yeah, so the square term and uh, so it equal to j omega minus omega square and so the h1 j uh, sorry h just h3 j omega is j omega minus omega 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 yeah and it meets the this well and the h equivalent because we know the, we just need to substitute the H1, H2, H3 into this, and we can get the H equivalent. Here, uh, one key point is that uh, we need to simplify this form because we know that when any kind of signal multiply with uh, delta function, so delta function only has value at when omega is equal to zero. So we substitute the omega equal to zero here into the this multiplication here. We find that this term will be, all be zero. So the only the minus j omega will be left. Okay. So the question D. It asks that if we have if we have a exponential input x t. And uh, with the output can be write like some kind of uh, um, some kind of constant like multiply with the x t. So whenever we see it, uh, maybe it's not a constant. Some kind of I mean a is constant. Some kind of things multiply with x t. So when we see the exponential term, we will immediately think about like the eigenfunction property. So if uh, adjust below. So eigenfunction property, I have reviewed it in the discussion of the 
uh, discussion eight of week eight. Sorry. And uh, so we like for example, if we have x t as input, so the y t will be h j omega zero multiplied with the exponential j omega zero. And we can fuse the right in the form of like the amplitude and the phase. We can utilize, utilize that thing to solve this question as well. And uh, so the solution give here that we can write the, I mean, the, the output in this form. And we, we substitute, so we know the omega zero in that egg function property equation is equal to pi over three. And we substitute the pi over three omega zero hj, I mean the hj omega zero. Omega zero is pi over three. So we substitute that into the omega t and we get the uh, form of omega t. So next step is just to compare the omega t with the omega t above and to see what a is. Yeah, what a is and what theta is. Here, like uh, we can like directly get the h j pi over three because we have already get the h equivalent of j omega. Okay, so the third question is about the sampling and modulation. So this question is a very good is a very good one. Mm. So we have uh, uh it asks you to determine the I mean the next rate of X T and X L T. Uh I think this question are quite simple, so I will not go through it. Let's just talk about the sampling and the modulation. So if we have x t, its Fourier transform is in this form, and if we multiply our cosine three omega zero t, so this means that in the Fourier domain it will be shifted. That's so with two impulse chain because we know that the cosine is Fourier transform will be two. Data from to data function. Uh, yeah, so it's not the important chain. So I mean the cosine is for transform will be two data and the one is the minus three omega zero, other is three omega zero. So this is frequency and uh, here we find that this part, I mean the left triangle will be shifted to the green. Green position, the position of green, uh, green triangle, and the red part of the, the the frequency triangle will be shifted to the uh, red part here. And then when it go to the go through, I mean then when it go through the low pass filter, I mean low pass filter below, the only this part will be left, and then when it is like the sampled with the import chain, it means that it will be shifted again. So the question C asks that if it is sampled by an import chain, like so what's the what's the, like the What's the max, maximum sampling period that uh, XT is recoverable? Like so if we have the output here, and uh, I mean if, if we want to like the, I if we want it. If we we like to have an impulse chain to sample it, it means that we want it to come through with the Fourier transform of an impulse chain. We don't want a lazy, so we want to keep. We would better keep make them like the, to have some distance between each other. 
So the worst case is that they evaluate each other. So we just need to consider the extreme case. So extreme case is that is the under the Nyquist sampling rate, when the XLT is the two omega zero, and we just consider this extreme edge case, and the T, I mean the maximum like the period T, will be two pi over two omega zero. So yeah, this is the, like the maximum sampling period. Okay, and the third one is, I mean, the first one is question D, asks that we cannot, if we cannot use the band pass and we cannot use the high pass filter, how can we recover it? So like the, we don't we don't have bad band pass, we cannot have high pass. So I think the only one is is the low pass filter. I mean, we can have the low pass filter. But what? But like the, how can we uh recover it? Because previously, the signal is in this kind of shape. Uh, yeah. So, so this, so here here it gives a solution that we firstly using a like low pass filter to get the signal signal. I mean signal signal, and then. We can shift it. We we can multiply with it, it with a cosine. Again, we shift it, so it will be centered at minus three cosine zero and the three cosine zero, and then we can utilize a low pass filter again, and this with this we can get the final signal. Okay. Uh, the question four is about the Laplace transform. Transform. This is a very standard Laplace transform question. Uh, first step, we have differential equations. How can we uh determine the HS? It's just to take take the Laplace transformation onto the differential equations, and uh, we can express that in the Laplace domain, and uh, we can get the HS. And the question B is like the, if we can have the input, how can we determine the output? Simultaneously, uh, similar, similar, we, uh, we need to find the Laplace transformation of the XS because we can see that XS is very standard. It's just a shift version of a step function, and we can see that. And then, for finding the YS, we just multiply the Laplace transformation of the XT with the HS, and uh, uh, and we need to take a step to decompose uh, the complex Laplace transformations because we need to find the easier easier way for us to the inverse Laplace transformations. We because I uh, I think everyone would have a, what can ref, can refer to the Laplace transformation table. If you see the table, you want to find the expressions that can be easily. You want to decompose the complex, complex like the uh, expression to the like the simple ones that can be like that can be transformed. Uh, when you like so when you using the table, yeah. So here we can decompose it into three. And uh, the next step is to de determine this is uh, the, like the numerator. To determine numerator, we just find the one that is not uh, inside the I mean denominator. We just substitute the s equal to one. It's here, but it's not inside the other two. And uh, we can determine the and then we can take the last step to do the inverse Laplace transformations. Okay. Yes, then we solve these questions. So here is the one key thing that we, we don't have. We we put the, I mean, the IC initial condition to be all zero. So in this step, we don't need to consider that. But keep in mind, if the initial condition, we def, maybe if we determine, if we define that, them as non-zero, 
you should uh, like uh, be careful for the step of the Laplace transform. Okay, that's all I would share for the week time discussion and uh, uh, wish you good luck for the final exam. Uh, goodbye.